the connection between the gut and sleep apnea is going to blow your mind. I know what it has for me when I was researching for this, because we all know that everything in our body is connected and something more than others, but the connection and the driving force from your gut to how you can keep your airway open at night is shocking. So someone sent me a paper on this. So thanks to the person who sent me the paper to inspire this. Here's your little thing. And if you know that reference, good for you on the ear pole. But what I want to start this off with is a paper over here where they're just doing what, you know, people typically do take poop from humans and put it inside of mice to see what happens. And they took the human obstructive sleep apnea patient poop and uh, made a smoothie with it, if you will, and then uh, transplanted that into the mice colon here. I don't know how to make that any more pleasant, but probably my visual language didn't really help. But nonetheless, so what they found in very short order is that these mice now with the obstructive sleep apnea gut microbiome, that's the important part, they started to show very, very quickly some of the downstream effects of having obstructive sleep apnea. Now, you can't really precisely measure obstructive sleep apnea in mice, very different <laughs> parameters and all that. But the downstream effects, especially blood pressure, if we look here, match up pretty closely. So here's everybody's blood pressure in mice uh, before the sleep apnea poo-poo. And then afterwards, you see here this bar, this uh, blue one here, I guess dark blue, is way higher. And that's from the people with obstructive sleep apnea there. Okay. Some nuance here or there, but the point being is that the only thing that changed was that they had the same gut microbiome as someone with sleep apnea and started to experience many of the same health problems. So when I started to dive even deeper into the research, very shocking, all the correlations you find of the mechanisms in which we gut, and we'll explain what that is in a moment, if you're not familiar, and how that can lead to obstructive sleep apnea. So as a reminder, I know a lot of times my videos are like, your gut causes sleep apnea. Aliens cause sleep apnea. It's mercury retrograde that causes sleep apnea. There's many different pieces to the puzzle. This may be a big one for you. This may be a small piece of the puzzle, but it's important to have a full understanding of all the different moving pieces. All right. So today we're going to talk about the leaky gut and sleep apnea. And of course, my mascot here, my disclaimer, Danny, educational purposes only. Okay. This is not medical advice. I'm just showing you research and mechanisms and different data for you to look at. And of course, always talk to your doctor about what to do with that information, but you don't need to ask your doctor to subscribe. That's something you definitely should do. So here we go. So the shocking thing here, and we'll go through this chart and reveal things as we go, how the gut leads to obstructive sleep apnea. So the very first thing, and when I go through this, there's just gonna be one thing that's three letters that you wanna keep in your mind, all right? The first thing, is that leaky gut will cause this massive systemic inflammation. So if we zoom in on your gut, this is a nice, healthy gut. I couldn't find a higher resolution picture, sorry. But here is it being the gut. It is a barrier. All this stuff is trying to come in, the barrier keeps it out, and all your immune cells on the inside here, they're feeling fine, okay? Dendritic cells over here having fun, macrophages just chilling out, everybody's happy, no one is throwing a tantrum. But then when we get dysbiosis, which means you have something interfering with your gut microbiome and then causing these invaders to come in and kind of sneak through the wall here. And that's what these circles over here represent. Can you see that? Yeah, you should be able to hear that, like the tiny circles. And there's they're there. They may not be causing a full-blown reaction from the immune cells, but that's what happens when we have full-blown leaky gut syndrome, where we have all the gates are open, kind of like, uh, oh, geez, what is that? Helm's Deep with Lord of the Rings. Uh, I don't make enough Lord of the Rings references. Uh, I actually read the books before I saw the movies, but uh, this is the invasion of Helm's Deep. They're coming in the orcs, and they are causing a reaction uh, amongst the guild here of where these cells are starting to kind of freak out and have an inflammatory response that is what's going on here and that is like the 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 kindling for the series of dominoes that are going to fall over and lead to obstructive sleep apnea now if we kind of back up for a little bit what the heck causes leaky gut syndrome that's a great question a lot of different things it could be alcohol it could be medication just spoke to you know a client who said they took some medications and you know having different issues downstream of that 
could be your diet, could be stress, uh, could be your environment has toxins in it, right? Or is this, is this a dead fish they're trying to represent? That's fun. There's many different things that can lead to that. Uh, but then also different diseases can lead to a leaky gut, uh, not only obstructive sleep apnea, uh, but also different metabolic diseases, whether that's your liver, your brain falling apart, all of this can precipitate leaky gut. So many ways to do that. Now, here's that thing I told you to write down moments ago, LPS. Nobody knows what it stands for. It's <laughs> That would be pretty wild. So it's lipopolysaccharide. And this is the molecule that these bacteria, these smaller circles, and I guess ovals, will kind of shoot out to the space and then they'll react with many different cell types and cause all sorts of little issues. And they'll cause a lot of inflammation to go on downstream. LPS, put that in your back cap so if, when we mention it later, you know kind of the, the fundamental crux of this entire conversation all based around LPS. So now we have inflammation. Now, how does it start to impact our breathing at night? It seems pretty ridiculous that something in your small intestine can now lead to your airway closing at night. Kind of sounds like a bunch of, you know, woo-woo alternative medicine, right? But we got some mechanisms, my friend. So first one is airway instability. So when you have upper airway inflammation, you start to have a lot of bad things happen. So this study, if you want to look more into it, what they found is that nerves will fire more slowly or just not at all in cases of systemic inflammation. And then separately, but also related, is that the muscles will become weak and floppy. You don't need a board certification in sleep medicine to know weak floppy muscles can precipitate sleep apnea. You don't need to know that. Well, you don't need the certification. That's just kind of like a... <laughs> That's an easy one. That's a gimme. And in case you want some text of what I just said, there it is. Let's just keep going. So the second thing is brainstem dysfunctions. So the brainstem is important because that is what tells your diaphragm to pull down and for you to expand your lungs and breathe. That's how that works. So inflammation will then cause issues in your brainstem here. And this is something that has been more recently mechanistically found out because theoretically it makes sense and they've seen that on MRIs, like reduced brainstem activity. But more cool is that you can actually do a little blinks reflex study. It's not, it's not like a simple thing. You need <laughs> some equipment for it. But people with sleep apnea have a reduced reflex, a reduced blink reflex, which is indicative of poor brainstem function. And the reason this sort of factor is in is your brainstem not only tells you how to breathe, like yes or no, but like how fast, how irregular. And so when your brain stems all wonky, you'll have these fast, irregular inhales, right? It'll be faster, more irregular. So kind of like that, if you will. And that will pull down those weak floppy muscles we talked about before. And then that will shut off the airway. So that's why the brain stem is a big issue. And LPS through inflammation will cause that to be a bigger issue. Then the third big component is kind of simple, but I have a neat little twist. And what it is, is, I mean, simply inflammation will lead to weight gain and all sorts of issues. If those tissues, especially the tongue, the tongue will start to gather a lot of fat, close off the, the size there. No bueno. Okay. That's awful. I used to know Spanish at one point, but I had to transplant it out. Now, the reason I remember that LPS thing, if you remember what it stands for, you get 20 more points. Uh, I don't mean that in a, in a, I was joking about my joke earlier, which is equally as unfunny as this joke right here. But LPS causes something known as leptin resistance. Leptin is a hormone in your body that tells your brain, hey, stop eating, you're full. But when you have high LPS and then inflammation from that, leptin is not going to work as it should. Then as a result, you're going to be more hungry and you're going to burn less fat. So more is coming in and you're burning less of the fat. And so it's going to accumulate, especially those visceral compartments. That's kind of like a inside the muscle, if you will, to super simplify it. We'll gather in here. And that's one of the biggest drivers of having poor breathing at night. So those are the, like the main three mechanisms by which that leads and drives obstructive sleep apnea. 
And and that's why when you look at some of these studies, such as this one, and we won't go too much into it, we're going to get into solution mode next. So studies like this will show that people with sleep apnea have higher markers of gut permeability, right? Now, and as we get into like what to do here, just want to take a quick pause. It's not really a fruitful question to ask chicken or the egg here because things are very multifactorial and that is like the worst way to explain away anything. I hate when people do that, including right now. But effectively, obstructive sleep apnea will also lead to inflammation, which will then also make your gut leaky. But then you have a leakier gut, it takes more damage, causes more inflammation, can make sleep apnea worse. So they run together. So I know we talk a lot about breathing exercise and stuff, so that's why the things here, which are for educational purposes only, not medical advice, we're going to talk about how you can reduce that LPS burden to help offset a lot of these things. So I know it says high fiber diet, just go with higher fiber, okay? Uh, not necessarily like go out of your way to eat all of these things here, and I'll pick a few because I always get these charts and I usually agree with half of them here. Because some of these things I'm not going to say are going to be great for gut health. Lentils, chickpeas. Do you know how much like glyphosate is in chickpeas? Good God. Uh, split peas are just gross. What else we got on here? Brown rice. No. Popcorn. No. I would really stick to more of like, you know, these fats, avocados, uh, berries are going to be okay. Mango might be too sugar. You might end up feeding some of the bad bacteria. Uh, sweet potatoes, I would give a thumbs up to. Cruciferous vegetables, yes. Apples, questionable. So you want to find the high fiber foods that work for you. All right, that's a, that's a big part of this here. But the reason is that if you have the right fibers come in, your bacteria will then make more butyrate, which is a fatty acid, and that will actually make the like the, the gut cells we talked about. Remember the, the diagram over there? That's just, I'm going to tell you to remember when it's literally like right over here. <laughs> uh, butyrate would allow us to go from here and kind of revert back a stage. All right. I guess over time, if things are all good, go back to a nice healthy gut flora. But butyrate is going to be one very important molecule. Yeah, you could totally supplement with butyrate. You could. Uh, it's a possibility. But I always prefer foods here. Of course, when I say you, I'm not giving you advice. I'm just saying. It's a consideration for you and your doctor. So fiber is going to be one of the, the big ones there. But on the flip side, don't go too much fiber. Okay. That's why like, you know, some is good. More is not necessarily better. Because if you introduce a ton of fiber, which can be pretty much just like bacteria fuel, if you're growing the wrong bacteria, that could be bad. So that's just one aspect. Uh, take it slow with that. Something you should take it fast with is subscribing to this channel. All right. You can tell I kind of forget that those are in there, but don't forget to click the subscribe button because we have lots of great information around sleep apnea and just whatever else you want within reason. Uh, if you want other topics, do let me know. Um, yeah, let me know. Next, number two, gut supporting nutrients. So there's many, L-glutamine, zinc, collagen, but really the MVP is going to be L-glutamine. Because similar to butyrate, it will selectively feed our border of the, well, really the brush cells, because butyrate feeds the bacteria and the brush cells. Uh, but this L-glutamine feeds more of those epithelial cells there. Really weird academic distinction that maybe just completely weighed down this part of it. But what you should know is that L-glutamine, think of it as like gut sealing fuel, okay? keeps things kind of almost like this item here. This is bone broth. Uh, you know that gelatinousness? That's definitely not a word. <laughs> gelatinousness. Um, think of L-glutamine making that happen inside of your gut. Yes, I know L-glutamine is not collagen, but just so you have the idea in your mind. And then also bone broth will have collagen in it, which is also very beneficial to reduce gut permeability for people with leaky gut. So L-glutamine, very, very super duper helpful. And number three is somewhat what we talked about earlier, because, uh, you know, fiber, pro and prebiotics are kind of all cousins here. Uh, but a little bit more pointed, if you will, because these different foods, you know, probiotics, they'll have certain bacteria that you would want to bring more into your gut that are healthier, right? 
and similar with prebiotics. But like when we were thinking about prebiotics, that's kind of, you know, what we talked about with the more fibrous foods, of course. And don't always believe my charts here. Let's go through this. Asparagus, thumbs up. Leeks, thumbs up. Onions, thumbs up. Garlic, thumbs up. Bananas, questionable if you're having gut issues. Berries, probably okay. Oats, eh, questionable. Legumes, questionable. Seeds, questionable. Uh, and of course, if you're someone who's reactive to FODMAPs, that's all, all of that's questionable, basically. Yeah, pretty much. So you want to lean towards having these probiotic foods that work with you here. So like yogurt, kefir, uh, and you actually get it from like a natural source. Okay. If like Danon has like, we added bacteria, probably just someone, you know, you know, scrape their shoe into the yogurt. That That's not true. Okay. Danon, don't sue me. <laughs> uh, but the point being is like naturally fermented things will have more of the bacteria that you really want um, in, in very high ways. Um, but if you're to ask me, what's the most important one? Because I know a lot of times we just like to buy something off the shelf. We want a probiotic that would counteract LPS. And the one that does that the best is this one. So if you want to take a screenshot of Bifidobacterium longum, uh, or just remember, you know, uh, that would be the strains you would want to see in any probiotic that you would want to selectively counteract LPS with. Now, of course, that may not be necessary. Okay, I like to go for foods first, probiotics. Super trendy, not always the most effective thing. And of course, if you're able to correct your breathing, that will go a long way in improving your sleep at night. Get to a nice, slow, steady inhale keeps your airway open. All right. I think I say that like once per episode, or maybe it's the first time <laughs> you've heard me say that. So to build on this, you got lots of great options. If you want to focus just on the information we had here, we got the episode guide, just to recap what we've talked about with the gut guide there. Uh, if you want to dive deeper on how to make the breathing happen and all the other nice things, you get the sleep apnea reset protocol workshop. It shows you just that some great breathing exercises, some great myofunctional exercises. So you can do tongue wiggles and all sorts of fun things to help keep your airway nice and supported at night. So that is there for you. To get either one of them, what you can do is uh, click the title if you're on your phone. Otherwise, it's just in the description for you. There will be a few links in there for the free guide, the Sleep Apnea Reset Protocol. Um, pretty easy to find. And before we go over the third option, I guess I forgot to make a QR code for this episode, but that's okay because you can just write this in. So if you want the leaky gut guide, go to ochnow.com forward slash leaky gut. If you want the sleep apnea reset protocol workshop, go to ochnow.com forward slash reset or scan the one QR code there. Uh, I guess I forgot to make it for this episode. Maybe I got leaky brain all of a sudden. <laughs> no, just been pushing through things here. And of course, you want to learn more about working with us in a way where it's like more structured than just a bunch of videos all the time about random stuff that hopefully appeals to algorithm. Hopefully that's what you want. So you can make even better progress. Go to ochnow.com forward slash program. All right. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.